When I think of gas-powered chainsaws, I think of lots of noise and a lot of two-stroke smoke. But the question is, are lithium-powered chainsaws actually better? Today we'll compare one gas-powered chainsaw against five lithium brands and we'll see which brand is the best. In the first test, we'll see how fast each brand can cut through nine 4x4s. Then we'll see how fast each brand cuts through some hardwood. We'll also compare runtime as well as battery recharge times. At $199.99, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Works. 14 inch bar, 40 volt max, brushless motor. The kit includes two 20 volt, two amp hour batteries. The Works chainsaw is made in China. Battery charger, both of the 20 volt batteries are two amp hour. The chain pitch is 3 eighths of an inch. Chain drive length, 52. Chain gauge, 0 0.043. Both the bar and the chain appear to be pretty good quality. They're both made by Oregon. The Works has a 14 inch bar, but you're only gonna be able to use about 13 and a quarter inches of the bar length. The Works has a self-tightening chain system. Both batteries came fully charged, so let's go ahead and power up this chainsaw. I really like this charge indicator on top of the chainsaw. The trigger lock is also in a good location. The Works does not have a variable speed trigger, it's all or nothing. Let's take a look under the hood. The 6.2 steel gear looks pretty solid. With the two steel pins sticking out as well as the stud, this seems to be a fairly well manufactured setup. Wow, only 4,300 no load RPM. A two stroke chainsaw is well over 10,000 RPM. There's a little bit of delay with this chainsaw. It takes about a second from the time the trigger is pulled until the chain is reached full speed. The second least expensive brand we'll be testing at $200 is made by Ryobi. Just like the works, it has a 40 volt lithium. It also has a brushless motor. It has a 14 inch bar. It claims to have gas-like power. Load sensing technology automatically adjusts power for optimal performance. We're gonna test that. Four amp hour battery for longer run time. Made in Vietnam. Five year warranty. 40 volt, four amp hour battery. Battery charger. Just like the works, the Ryobi also uses a 3 8 inch pitch chain with 52 links. It does have a 0 .50 instead of a 0 .44 chain gauge. The tool to remove the chain is mounted at the back of the saw. Even though the Ryobi has a 14 inch bar, there's only about 12 inches of usable length. 6.2 steel gear looks pretty solid. Two studs and the rest of this is made of plastic. The Ryobi bar and chain appear to be made by Oregon. 11,700 RPM for Ryobi. So the Ryobi has about two and a half times the chain speed compared to the Works. Costing nearly twice as much as the Works in the Ryobi is this DeWalt brand at $349. The DeWalt comes with a 16 inch bar, 60 volt max, three amp hour brushless chainsaw. Up to two times faster cuts. The DeWalt comes with a three year warranty. Tool and accessories made in China. Charger made in China or Thailand. Battery made in China, Japan, South Korea, or Malaysia. Battery charger. At 20 volts, the DeWalt delivers nine amp hours. At 60 volts, just three amp hours. About 14 and three quarter inches of usable bar length with the DeWalt. The bar and the chain on the DeWalt appears to be made by Oregon. The pitch on the chain is three eighths of an inch. It also has a narrow kerf chain, 0 .043, which is the same as the works. The drive link count is 56. The DeWalt has a 6.2 sprocket just like the Ryobi as well as the Works. A steel stud as well as just one pin, the setup on the DeWalt doesn't seem as robust as the Works or the Ryobi. I really don't like the DeWalt safety switch location, it's just not in a very natural position and it takes quite a bit of downward pressure. The safety switch setups on the other saws just seem a lot better. 8,156 RPM. At a price of $406.55 is this Makita LXT brushless chainsaw. 36 volt, 16 inch bar. The Makita comes with an extra set of batteries. Three year warranty. It claims to offer a 45 minute charge time. 3 8 inch pitch, 0 .043 gauge. The Makita has a variable speed trigger. The chainsaw is made in China and so is the charger. The batteries are made in Japan, China, Singapore, Korea, or Malaysia, further processed in China, Vietnam, or Korea. Battery charger, Oregon chain, six tooth sprocket, two pins, as well as a stud. The Makita also uses metal instead of plastic. The chain cover also makes use of metal instead of plastic. I really like the safety setup on this Makita the best so far. All you have to do to use this chainsaw is grab the handle and it's ready for use. Power switch, the Makita has a dual battery indicator. The Makita has a variable speed trigger. Wow, the Makita spins up a lot faster than the other brands. 10,726 RPM. Metal bumper spikes, very nice. Very nice with a chain guard. 
The Makita has a 16 inch bar, but only 14.5 inches of usable bar length. At $445, the most expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Milwaukee. M18 fuel, driven to outperform. We're gonna test that. Power to cut hardwoods, we're gonna test that too. Faster than gas, we're gonna find out for sure whether or not this is true. 16 inch chainsaw kit. The kit includes one high output 12 amp hour battery, M18 and M12 rapid charger. One charge equals 150 cuts into a six by six seater. The Oregon bar, Oregon chain, as well as the chainsaw are all made in China. Up to 20% faster cuts compared to standard gas competitor. Milwaukee rapid charger, M18 12 amp hour battery. The trigger safety switch is definitely in a better location than the DeWalt. Just like the Makita, the Milwaukee also has a chain guard as well as a metal bumper. Just like all the other brands, six tooth sprocket. The two stud designed by Milwaukee definitely seems a lot more durable than the design used by DeWalt. 6,470 RPM. Oh, the battery powered chainsaws will be competing against the Steel MS170. This chainsaw typically runs between $180 and $200. The Steel has a 16 inch bar and has 15 inches of usable bar length. 30.1 cc, 1.7 horsepower engine. To give the gas chainsaw a fair chance, I'm going to go ahead and install a new chain. Fifteen thousand eight hundred RPM. The sound meter is placed thirty inches directly over the chainsaw handle. Ninety decibels for the works. Definitely a lot quieter than a gasoline-powered saw. Wow, ninety-nine decibels for Ryobi. Ninety-nine decibels. Ninety-eight decibels. 93 decibels. 105 decibels, pretty loud. Gasoline powered steel came out on top at 15,800, Ryobi second at 11,690, Makita 10,726, DeWalt 8,156, Milwaukee 6,470, and the works at only 4,300. All the battery powered chainsaws were a lot quieter than the two stroke saw. The works in the Milwaukee are the two quietest saws, but also made the lowest RPM. The Makita, Ryobi, and the DeWalt were all very close to the same. Advertised chainsaw bar length doesn't exactly translate into usable bar length with a new chain. The steel in Milwaukee had the most usable bar length. DeWalt wasn't far behind at 14 and 3 quarter inches and Makita at 14 and a half inches. The works in the Ryobi both have 14 inch bars. The works has a usable bar length of 13 and a quarter inches and Ryobi 12 inches. With the batteries in place, the works weighs 10.6 pounds. The Ryobi weighs 11.4 pounds, which is slightly heavier than the works. The DeWalt weighs 12.6 pounds. The Makita weighs 11.4 pounds. The Milwaukee is the heaviest yet at 14.4 pounds. The steel gasoline powered saw weighs 10.6 pounds. The works in the gasoline powered steel are the lightest at 10.6 pounds, but the Ryobi and the Makita, which have at least twice the battery capacity of the works, weigh just under a pound more at 11.4. The DeWalt weighs 12.6, and the Milwaukee was by far the heaviest at 14.4 pounds. To test the saws, I'll be using steel platinum bar and chain lubricant. In the first test, we're gonna see how much time it takes for each one of these saws to cut through nine four by fours. I tested the works two more times to see if we could beat 17.14 seconds, but the second and third cuts were slightly slower at 18.5 and 17.9 seconds. Wow, with the chain speed on the works, it just took a lot of effort to get that saw to cut through the wood. Definitely need a lot more chain speed with a chainsaw than the works is delivering. The first cut with the Ryobi took 14.4 seconds. I was a little too aggressive on the second cut and it stalled out twice, but still managed a 16.8 second time. The third cut was the fastest at 14.1 seconds, which is three seconds faster than it works. Wow, the increased chain speed on the Ryobi made a huge difference. The Ryobi took a lot less downward pressure and also there was a lot less vibration because it had a lot higher chain speed. I applied a little bit too much downward force on the DeWalt on the first cut and it stalled once but still managed the fastest cut yet at 12.2 seconds. The second cut was even faster at 10.9.
The last was a fastest shed at 10.3. Very impressive. Wow, huge difference between the DeWalt and the Ryobian works. It cuts really fast, very little vibration. I actually enjoyed using the DeWalt. It seems just as good as my gasoline chainsaw. Unfortunately, I stalled the saw on the first cut, which really slowed it down to a 15 second cut. The second cut was the best of three at 13.4 seconds. Once again, I stalled out the saw on the third cut, but still managed a 14.4 second time. The DeWalt definitely seems a lot faster than the Makita, but the Makita seems like a more balanced saw. I enjoy using the Makita better, and I give up a little bit of cut time, but the DeWalt is definitely a faster saw. I stalled the Milwaukee on the first cut, really slowing things down to 16.7 seconds. The second cut was the fastest of the three at 13.7. The third cut took 13.9 seconds. The Milwaukee just doesn't have very good chain speed. On the positive side, it has an incredible amount of power with that lower gearing. The Milwaukee doesn't seem to cut as fast on the softwoods. It'll be very interesting to see how it performs on some hardwood. Each of the first two cuts took 13.8 seconds each. The third cut was slightly faster at 13.5 seconds. Wow, the high chain speed of the steel is very evident. Very little vibration when I'm cutting. The lithium power saws offer a tremendous amount of torque where the gasoline powered chainsaw just offers a lot more chain speed. So the DeWalt was by far the fastest saw at 10.3 seconds, the Makita second at 13.4, the gas powered chainsaw third at 13.5, Milwaukee fourth at 13.7, Ryobi fifth at 14.1, and Work six at 17.14. Chain speed has a huge impact on how fast the saws cut. It also impacts how much input is required from the user. A slower chain speed and you'll have to apply a lot more downward force to cut just as fast. To measure the difference between the saws, I'm going to add two and a half pounds of weight to the front of the saw and I'm only going to be holding the trigger and not applying any downward force and we'll see how much time it takes between the different brands. With two and a half pounds of weight attached to the bar, the works took 17.7 seconds to cut through just six 4x4s. A slow chain speed really hurt the works. The Ryobi totally crushed this test at only 9.9 .9 seconds. The high chain speed really helped the Ryobi. The DeWalt did even better than the Ryobi with a blistering 8.6 seconds. The Makita did a very respectable 10.3 second finish, but DeWalt was nearly two seconds faster. The Milwaukee slow chain speed really hurt the speed of the cut. It was the slowest yet at 18.6 seconds. The gasoline powered saw, which has by far the fastest chain speed, made the fastest cut yet at 8.3 seconds, but DeWalt wasn't too far behind at 8.6 seconds. The saw that requires the least amount of user effort is the gasoline powered saw, but the DeWalt was a very close second, Ryobi third, Makita fourth, Works fifth, and Milwaukee sixth. One thing for sure, this honey locust tree is a lot harder than the 4x4s we just cut. So let's see if the high torque, slower chain speed saws like the Milwaukee can perform better on this test. Wow, that honey locust really put the saw to the test. Definitely not an easy job for the Works brand. It really seemed to struggle compared to some of the other saws. The Works requires a lot more user input in order to make good progress through the wood. The hardwood is really putting the saws to the test. I stalled out the Ryobi once, but it still managed a 29 second time on the first pass.
I did install it the saw in the second pass and it did even better at 24.1 seconds, nine seconds faster than the works. Wow, I really like the Roby a lot better than the works. It requires a lot less user input. Just the chain speed alone makes a huge difference on the smoothness of the cut and definitely the speed. The Dewalt cut through the honey locust like a hot knife through butter on the first pass at 17 seconds. It did even better in the second pass at 15.5. The Dewalt has a perfect mix of torque and chain speed making this look way too easy. The Makita has a lot of chain speed, but definitely not as much torque as the Dewalt. I stalled out the Makita twice in the first cut, which really slowed it down to 23.9 seconds. It did much better in the second cut at 21.4 seconds, moving into the second position behind Dewalt. To take advantage of the high torque, low chain speed, you've got to really use the bumper spikes and work the saw. I was a little too aggressive on the first cut, installed the saw twice, causing a 22.9 second finish. Things went a lot better in the second pass with a 19.7 second finish and the Milwaukee moves into the second position, four seconds behind the wall. The high chain speed of the gas powered saw means there's very little effort required. You pretty much just let the weight of the saw do all the work. 21.9 second finish on the first cut. It did slightly better in a second cut at 21.1. So the DeWalt finished first at 15.3 seconds, Milwaukee second at 19.7, the gas powered saw 21.1, Makita 21.4, and Ryobi 24.1. After making all those cuts, the DeWalt is still on three bars. Wow, the works is nearly used up at one bar. The Ryobi is down to two bars. One of the Makita batteries is at four bars, the other one, three bars. Three bars for the Milwaukee. I just finished recharging all of the batteries and then the next task, we're gonna compare the total runtime for each of the brands. For safety reasons, I have the two by four running through the handles of each of these chainsaws to keep them from getting tangled up during the test. Obviously, there's a huge difference in runtime between a no load condition and actually using the saw to cut through wood. However, a no load comparison will give us some great information on how each saw compares. After only 10 minutes, all the saws except the works had used up the chain oil. So to keep the chain in the bar from becoming too hot, I just applied oil manually every minute or so. And the works was the first one to run out of juice at 20 minutes. The Ryobi wasn't too far behind at 22 minutes and 27 seconds. And the first set of Makita batteries gave up at 31 minutes. So the four battery kit would allow for a total of 62 minutes of run time. And the Dewalt lasted 37 minutes and 12 seconds. And the Milwaukee really stood out lasting 63 minutes and 4 seconds. Very impressive. Since the Makita came with an extra set of batteries, the total run time would be around 62 minutes, very close to the same as the Milwaukee. The Dewalt lasted just over 37 minutes, the Ryobi 22.5 and the Works 20. Now that we know the no load run time, let's see how long it takes to charge the batteries. And the Works, which has a 2 amp hour battery, was the first to finish at just 1 hour. The Makita, which has 5 amp hour batteries, finished 13 seconds later. And the Milwaukee, which has a 12 amp hour battery, was the third to finish at 129 minutes. And the Dewalt took a little over 10 minutes longer than the Milwaukee at 139 minutes and 23 seconds. And the Ryobi was the last to finish at 157 minutes and 34 seconds. So the works in the Makita both needed very close to 60 minutes. The Milwaukee was third at 129, Dewalt fourth at 139, and Ryobi fifth at 157. Obviously applying a load to the saws will drain the batteries much faster than the no load test. So under the most optimal conditions, the Makita and the Milwaukee offer the best work to recharge time ratio of one to two. In other words, for every minute of no load use, they need two minutes to recharge. The works has approximately one to three, the Dewalt one to four, and Ryobi one to seven. Please let me know if you want to see another chainsaw showdown along with which brand you want to see tested and we'll see if any of them can keep up with the Dewalt. Dewalt really crushed it in this showdown, really impressed with the cutting speed. If you don't want to spend the $350 on the Dewalt and you're looking for a really light duty saw for occasional use, the Ryobi does a great job. My personal favorite though is the Makita. It just seems like the best all around saw, great build construction, very light and very balanced. 
All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer recommended. If you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.